You guys want to know the difference between debouncing and throttling? Well, in this video, I'm going to go over the difference between the two, when best to use either of them, and an implementation of them in JavaScript. So let's get after it. Now, as you can see on my screen here, I'm using highly sophisticated software to display a data visualization of the differences between debouncing and throttling. So as you can see here, the regular represents user input. Now, as you can see, there's tons of input here. Now, how does the debounce work? Well, the debounce sets a timer for each time the user inputs. And then every time the user inputs, it resets that timer and then resets it. So let's say that timeout is 300 milliseconds. If that user input happens within that 300 milliseconds, that timeout is reset. So after the last user input, that timeout is able to be exhausted. And then we get that input to be able to perform side effects on it. So what is this used for? What is this great for? Well, this is great for any type of input that interacts with an API because as you could imagine with a user, you know, we don't get to control how they type on the keyboard and some users just smash the keyboard making tons of inputs and this could all trigger an API response if that input has an on change detection on it. So to avoid tons of requests to our server, we basically just wait into that timeout exhaust and then we only take one request out of the multiple requests being made. So on to throttle. So how does throttling work and how's the difference? Well, it's a little similar because it does have a timeout, but it's implemented a tiny bit differently. So when the first event triggers, we do get that event, but then the timeout happens. And then in that timeout, no events that are made by the user are recognized. And after that timeout's exhausted, we get one more event and then that process continues. So why would we want to use this? Well, this is great when you have something that triggers an enormous amount of events. An example of that can be screen resizing and then also scrolling. Now these trigger tons of events and if you have any listeners on there, you'd be triggering those events thousands of times. So that's where throttling comes into use. Now let's jump into the code and implement both of these. First things first, let's start with our debounce function. I'm gonna go ahead and declare it here. And then what this debounce function does is it takes two parameters. It takes our callback function and it also takes our timeout. We're just gonna set a default value for that timeout at 300 milliseconds. Perfect. Now what does this debounce function need to do? Well, it needs a reference to that timeout to be able to clear it later and reset it like I was alluding to earlier. So let's go ahead and do that here. Let's declare an arbitrary variable name. We'll call it timer and set it to just undefined. Perfect. Now let's return a closure. And then we're going to pass in our arguments array and we're going to spread over that there. And I'm going to show you why we did that in just a minute. Perfect. So now that we had that there, we have our arguments from our top function passed down to our closure here. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to clear our timeout, which is going to be that timer right there. Perfect. Then after we clear our timeout, we're going to go timer equals set timeout. We're going to pass in the function and then the function is just going to call function dot apply. And I'm using apply here over other things like call because that second argument is an array. Our context is going to be this. And then at second argument is just going to be our args array. So we don't have to use that spread operator twice. And after we do that, we're just going to pass in our timeout from above. Perfect. And that's all there is to a debounce function. Now let's implement this and see this in action. So we're going to have a log this function. And then this log this function is going to console.log and it's just going to log uh, the event was triggered. Perfect. Okay, now after we do that, let's go ahead and trigger this. So we're going to go let trigger debounce equal debounce. And it's going to go debounce and we're going to pass in a function and the function is going to call log this. So this is our callback function right here. And then that timeout, we don't need to specify as we have that 300 millisecond timeout above. We're just going to go ahead and leave this blank. Okay, perfect. Now let's go ahead and call it. So we have our trigger debounce here and then let's call it five times. So normally what we would expect to happen is we would see the event was triggered logged five times, but since we're debouncing and resetting it, we will only see it after that last trigger to pounds is executed once and after a 300 millisecond timeout. So let's go ahead and see that in action. There you go. There's 300 milliseconds. Now let's come here and let's make this one second just so it could be a little bit more pronounced. There we go. We waited the one second. This event, this function was executed five times, but again, we only took one of that function and performed side effects on it. And it's after that specified timeout of one second. Perfect. Now I'm going to remove this execution. I'm going to clear our console and let's move on to throttle. So throttle, we'll declare the function here. And then what does this throttle function take? Well, it takes our callback function. And it also takes a timeout. Then I'm going to declare this timeout as having 500 milliseconds as that default value. Now, what does throttle need to do? 
Throttle needs a flag to be able to tell it that we are in that timeout and we should short circuit the function. So we need to pretty much tell it to wait if it's being executed within that timeout. So let's set another arbitrary variable. We'll call it should wait. Perfect. And we're going to set equal to false. Okay. After we do that, let's go ahead and let's return. Let's return a function here. And this function again is just going to be take our arguments that we're going to just spread operator on. Then first thing we do here is actually set up that short circuiting, which should be should wait. And then we just return here. Perfect. There's our short circuiting there. Then after we short circuit, if we shouldn't wait, we're going to go ahead and we're going to execute that function. And we're going to use that apply thing from above, that apply operator from above. And we're going to pass in this and then we're going to pass in the arguments. Perfect. Then after we do that, we need to do a few things here. After we execute it, we need to tell it should wait to be true. So that's how we know not to execute it within our timeout. And then we need to change that true to false after our specified timeout. Let's do that right here. Perfect. That, that function there. And then let's do should wait equals to false. Perfect. And then that timeout is again that timeout above. And that's all there is to the throttle function. Let's go ahead and let's implement it. So we need to do let trigger throttle equals throttle. And then we're going to pass in a callback function, which is just going to be the um, log this from above. And then we have that timeout. Let's leave the timeout as a default timeout of 500 milliseconds. Perfect. Now let's go ahead and use set interval to see this in action. Set interval. And the set interval is going to take on our function, which is going to call trigger throttle. Perfect. And then we're going to call this every 100 milliseconds. Perfect. So since we did this, let's think about what's happening here. Um, every 100 milliseconds we get events. So within this timeout, there's five events, five events that are being triggered. But what's going to happen is we're going to take the first event and then wait 500 milliseconds. And again, those five events in that wait time of 500 milliseconds will be ignored. Then after those five events are ignored, the sixth event we will then take and then we will output it. So we then should see it after each 500 milliseconds. Let's go ahead and first let's save it and then let's run it. So you can see it was immediately shown and then after every 500 milliseconds you see it again let's go ahead and let's increase this to one second so we could be able to see a more pronounced version of this yep as you can see and again you can see this function is being executed 10 times but we're only taking the one call and then waiting a thousand milliseconds within that timeout and then taking another just single call and resetting the process again. And that's all there is to debounce and throttling. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I can't wait to see you in the next one. Take care.